All right, Jim, our next question sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Stuart. I was reading an article about Triple H's fall from power in this month's Inside the Ropes magazine, and in it, it referred to Kevin Dunn and Triple H having a problematic relationship that affected the call-ups from NXT to the main roster. It implied that because of the issues, Dunn deliberately went out of his way to make wrestlers look bad to make Triple H look bad. My question to Jim is this. Would Kevin Dunn have this power? And if so, <laughs> why? Would, uh, why he do... All of a sudden, why he do... The, la the last he sentence do? went off the rail. And if so, why would he do... Oh, excuse me. Let me I can fix it now. And if so, why would he do it as it seems counterproductive? Well, yes, he does have that power. And as far as why he has that power, I've never had any idea. And as far as why he would do it, it's because they're all like a bunch of fucking Republicans scampering for Donald Trump's approval up there and have been since before Donald Trump was even a thing. Everybody wants to get over with Vince. And for whatever reason, for whatever purpose, I've never understood it, Kevin Dunn's opinion is asked for, solicited, and listened to by on opinion, not on television production, what he's in charge of, what he's supposed to be doing, but about wrestlers and wrestling talent. Nobody but Vince and the people that get their marching orders from Vince ever consult with Kevin Dunn on wrestlers or wrestling talent. Everybody else knows that he's a complete idiot. He doesn't know what he's looking at, and he hates wrestling to begin with. So his opinion matters not, but he thinks that the same type of people that Vince thinks should be pushed as stars should be pushed as stars. And if you don't look like or act like or talk like what he thinks that Vince would like, then if somebody else is pushing for you, he goes in and tells Vince all the negatives about that talent so that it will make him look good because Vince will then agree with him because he's saying all the shit that Vince thinks and has taught him. And it will, by process of elimination, ipso fatso, it will make the person that is pushing for the guy that Kevin Dunn is burying and doesn't think Vince should like, it will make him look like he doesn't know what he's talking about to Vince. So it accomplishes several things at the same time. And the byproduct of that is the byproduct of telling one of the fucking TV executives that has come out and said that they're not wrestling, that doesn't like the wrestling business, that never watched it as a fan, and all he learned about it, he learned from Vince McMahon. He gets to pick wrestlers. I've never understood, and 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 a lot of other people haven't either, why Kevin Dunn should have an opinion on anything but television, but he does, and he gets away with it. And that's how he stays right there groveling next to Vince like a fucking buck-toothed Renfield trying to eat the last spider. Are you surprised even with that power and that role that he would, if this is true, and we've heard it before, it's not just this email, that he would aim at Triple H and the guys that Triple H is personally working with in NXT? Well, he didn't have to, he didn't have to mention Triple H's name. He just, Vince, look at this guy or look at this girl or don't you think that he would bring up all of the things that he would think that Vince would think is wrong with that person by looking at him. I mean, you know, I mean, it's been that way the whole time. The whole time that he's been around Vince McMahon, he will sit there and, and rub his hands together and wait for the opportunity to say something that Vince will agree with or to agree with Vince McMahon. And He's the worst enemy that the wrestling business has had in that company over these years because he, everything that we talk about sucks about wrestling today, he loves. Everything we talk about, what we used to love about wrestling, he pisses on. That's Kevin Dunn. That's why he and Shitstain got along so good. Besides them both being backstabbing social climbing pricks, they hate wrestling and love Gaga. Boy, it was a great story. At the, this was 1997, I want to say 1998. 
Kevin Dunn was first starting to make the big money. He's made millions since then. They've paid that little fucking muskrat a fortune. But he bought him a piece of property up in Connecticut and had a brand new big old, and you can imagine how much it cost to have a house built in Connecticut. And goddamn, which started off a legal issue that I think it, it lasted a year or more from what I remember. I may have left before it was ever adjudicated or settled, but somehow or another, the clown car construction company that he had built this house built it like five feet over the neighbor's property line. <laughs> no, I never heard that before. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. That's people were talking about it at the studio. I don't, you know. That's amazing. I, I ain't want to say it's true. You ain't heard it from me, but a lot of people were saying it. And I just got a huge tickle out of that. Well, Jim, perhaps if you were capable of going back in time, perhaps if you were, let's say, Superman or Hulk Hogan and had the ability to change time and go back in time. Reverse can, the continuum. Maybe you can go find Kevin Dunn's neighbor. And maybe you could recommend a good lawyer. <laughs> You know what? As a matter of fact, if only I had known this man back then, I could have put him onto Kevin Dunn's neighbor and we could have had Kevin Dunn kicked out of the state of Connecticut. If you want an attorney that will not only fight for your rights in open court, but also kick Bucky Beaver out of the entire state, go to this man. Call Stephen P. To the rest. Boy, howdy, I'll tell you what. Did you see, Brian? The news came out. One of the big settlements against one of the big drug companies for the opioids. Kentucky is rolling in the money right now. Stephen P. New has a piece of that. He in, in a number of states, he's been filing these suits, the class action suits, on behalf of parents and grandparents and people in charge of caring for the uh, children that were born addicted to opioids because of the misrepresentations of some of these pharmaceutical companies. And it just had a big multi-hundred million dollar judgment. And court Kentucky and West Virginia, where Stephen is from, have been hit real hard with the opioid crisis. And so uh, as a result of that, the drug manufacturers are now being start to being held accountable for this and that's what newlawoffice.com, Stephen P. New at 888-692-8084 can do for you if you are in that class of folks who have been harmed or affected by the opioid-addicted babies and the withdrawal from same, etc. The suits are currently being filed. It's multiple states. You don't have to be in West Virginia or Kentucky to be involved. And we know he answers his phone and he calls you back. So, call Stephen P. New at 888-692-8084 or drop him a line, as they say, over at newlawoffice.com. What a state-of-the-art website. I think Featherbottom was involved in that one as well. And, uh, and also, New Law Office is a title sponsor of the big reunion in round town from Big Time Wrestling and Bobby Fulton's promotions up in Circleville, Ohio. In a couple of weeks on Saturday, March 12th, I will be there in spirit. I'll be there in spirit. And other people will be there drinking spirits. So newlawoffice.com presenting you with that as well. What, what, what else can we say about a Renaissance man like Stephen P. New? He's here. He's there. He's everywhere. He's El Cabong. He may be one day defending people against your spirit. Who knows well, where you you'll be in the future? You never know about the, if you need defended against a spirit, or if you want to just get in the spirit, <laughs> whatever the case, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. We embrace Stephen, the consigliere. He's one of us.